writing is something that happens deep in your soul. It's something that lives on its own, taking root in a large enough percentage of us so that it matters. For some, they take to painting, others become musicians, and still others become actors, photographers, sculptors, poets, and thespians. They share that common bond of creativity. To create something from nothing is an act of faith in humanity. The best writers are the ones that refuse to quit. The best writers are those that keep at it and finally produce something because they have learned that quitting is not an option. I am talking about those little-known books that keep us turning the pages. These books are the reason we haunt libraries and bookstores. These are the writers that followed their own vision and ignored the blather that today speckles the internet like teenage acne. There are books here that I treasure, that I return to now and again. Because I live in a world that includes books, I have embraced a universe of ideas. What do people do when they're hungry? When people are hungry, they dream. They don't just dream about the food they need, but they dream on a grander scale. They dream about becoming something better than their circumstances. They dream about building a civilization where the American dream of equality and prosperity is a universal fact. They dream about lifting themselves up from the tragedies of their lives and becoming like the heroes they read about in Pulp Fiction or the heroes they see on the silver screen. They dream about falling in love. They dream about the simplicity and beauty of a child's smile. They dream about removing the stamp of grief from the faces of their loved ones. They dream about those adventures found in books or seen in films. And from this inspiration, they create a new life. This is the impetus for a writer's journey, to dream and to share that dream. Stories are cut from the fabric of history and retold around campfires, typed onto pages, printed in books, and shared by friends. This amazing world that we call literature is a chronicle of human history. Look at these musty old books. I thumb the pages and let them cascade like a pulp waterfall. You have to slow down, control your breathing, and find your own heartbeat before you can read books like these. And if you do, I promise you won't be disappointed. In books like these, you can smell the sunlight, taste the wind, soar above the summer's streets with an omniscient viewpoint that places you front and center for the action. And when the action heats up, you'll drift down like a sparrow and perch on the eaves, and yes, to eavesdrop on the day's events. A book touches us at both the intellectual level and the spiritual level, and the very good ones resonate for our lifetimes. We internalize what we read, we consume the words and feed from them, for this is the stuff that nourishes our minds. Reading requires enthusiasm and rewards us with its resonating ideas. My life has been defined by reading and writing. Words have a rhythm and resonance like music. The effect words have on me linger like a beautiful song. I have the ability to recall great lines the way musicians recall tempo changes and intricate chords. And so, from this place on the blank electronic page, the computer humming softly, I have led you into my den where lurk strange creatures and characters in the flickering candlelight. Machen's great god Pan is here and high on the shelf where the air smells of salt the whisper of something old that once lived in the Sargasso Sea and made William Hope Hodgson shiver. Blink and the fabric of time opens like a curtain and see this cowboy ride against the blood-red sun as it cools sinking down, down into the vast blue bowl of night, riding into a forest where dragons feed on giant mushrooms and a glimmering stainless steel spacecraft stands like a bullet in a pasture of purple flowers and gnarled trees with limbs like the arms of witches burning at the stake. 
The white rabbit is here, and Alice is still lost in Wonderland. Peter and Wendy and the Lost Boys and Arthur and his sword all linger in the background waiting to be rediscovered by a reader. Classic characters like Long John Silver, Tarzan of the Apes, James Bond and Douglas Spaulding in Greentown all await you. Picture yourself wandering and lost in an immense primordial forest until you encounter a large mansion. You approach the mansion's solitary door cautiously. The doorway before you is cut from oak, sealed with iron slats, forged by a master carpenter. The doorway that you and I find ourselves standing before can only be unlocked with our imagination. Anything is possible. And that's just the first chapter.